having trouble sleeping? That night person could be in your genes. Our body is actually made up of a whole set of different clocks that are running at different times. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. Welcome to Secrets of the Sequence. I'm Lucky Severson. We all suffer from that sense that time seems to be rushing by us, feel like we're slaves to the clock. Is that real or perception? You may be surprised. Time is as ancient as the universe itself. The 24-hour clock is based on the 24-hour rotation of the Earth around its axis, creating our cycles of day and night. All living things on this planet evolved around this 24-hour clock. A really important discovery was made in the early 70s when uh, two groups actually located a part of the brain at the base of the brain called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, uh, which contain special cells that act as clocks. The suprachiasmatic nucleus, or SCN, acts as a master clock. It takes its cues from the cycle of day and night. Light hits the eye, traveling through the optic nerve to the SCN, where thousands of neurons are excited. Together they act as a biological clock regulating the timing of our circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythm is our sleep-wake cycle and is regulated mostly by light. Recent research has proven that it takes more than one cellular clock to keep us ticking. In a sense the clocks are hardwired because they are genetically controlled. That is, the way the timing signal is generated right. comes from a special set of genes uh, that cycle over 24 hours. Dr. Takahashi's research into the workings of these genetic clocks has been through the courtesy of the lab mouse. It appears that mice have very easy to read, if not somewhat backward, sleep-wake cycles. They are awake at night and sleep during the day. When they're awake, they run and run and run and run about five miles each night. During the day, they rest, making it easy to monitor their internal clocks. In almost every case, when we find a mouse gene, uh, there is a corresponding human equivalent gene. And that is exactly the case for circadian clock genes. Every mouse gene that has been discovered uh, has a human equivalent. So today there are uh, between 10 and 12 uh, genes that are thought to be involved in circadian rhythms in, in various aspects. These circadian genes work together as a network in the human body. In addition to regulating when we sleep and wake, they also direct the sleep-wake cycle of all our other genes, turning them on and off. It's been found that circadian genes are, are found in all sorts of parts of the body. So in the liver or your, or your heart, each of those tissues has a set of clock genes that's oscillating. Um, and one of the surprises is that if you isolate those tissues, they can oscillate and show circadian rhythms all by themselves, separated from the body. So our body is actually made up of a whole set of different clocks that are running at different times. Perhaps this allows our body to make uh, adjustments in time more easily. And what can happen when these genes lose their synchrony? The answer may keep you awake at night. About sleep phase disorders. Individuals with delayed sleep phase syndrome are known as owls. Their circadian rhythms direct their body to stay up unusually late, often until the wee hours of the morning, oh. and then sleep until late in the morning to midday. Individuals with advanced sleep phase syndrome are larks. They are often unable to stay up past 8 o'clock at night and often wake before the crack of dawn. Each person has a genetic inclination to be an owl or a lark, a morning person or a night person. This predisposition becomes a disorder when the aberrant circadian rhythm results in significant distress and sleep deprivation. 
This is the, the large pedigree from which we collected the, the samples for our genetic analysis. There, there is both direct pedigree. and indirect evidence that there is a genetic basis uh, for these circadian rhythm disorders. That is not to say that all circadian rhythm disorders are genetic. There may be sporadic, as it would be in any disorder, but at least I think having this genetic uh, basis allows us now to dissect the genetic regulation of sleep and circadian rhythms in humans. Sylvia Lee Palmer has always been an owl. Her day starts about 2 p.m. and ends when she finally falls asleep around 5 in the morning. It's a real problem given her current lifestyle. I can't do any of the things that other retired women or people who live in a, a senior citizen residence can do because all their f activities are geared to 7.30 in the morning till 8 o'clock p.m. And at 8.30, everyone goes to sleep, and that's when I'm just becoming awake. Over the years, prescribed sleep medications altered Sylvia Lee's clock enough to help her function in our 24-hour world. A few years ago, the medication stopped working, and she was back to sleepless nights. First, it would take me two hours after I got into bed to fall asleep. Then I would sleep two hours. Then I'd, I couldn't sleep again, so I'd either start reading or I'd get up many, many nights. There was no further sleep. And it sounds unbelievable. It really does. To, from two o'clock in the morning until 11 o'clock at night the following day to stay awake and not go into bed. Sylvia Lee checked into Dr. Phyllis Z's sleep lab at Northwestern Memorial Hospital in Chicago. Here they'll be monitoring her sleep patterns. Dr. Z has studied the DNA of other patients hoping to find clues about genetic effects on the circadian clock mechanism. The goal is to provide a better understanding of the patient's daily sleep-wake cycle and enable doctors to provide more effective treatments. It may be possible to manipulate these uh, genes that regulate sleep and circadian rhythms. In fact, we know we can. For example, we can use light, and we know light alters the expression of these circadian genes uh, in, the, in the suprachiasmatic nucleus. Light treatment for sleep disorders involves exposing patients with circadian problems to particular kinds of light sources at certain times of the day. For instance, exposure to ultraviolet lamps in the early morning hours may treat the so-called owls by advancing their circadian genetic clock. This treatment and ongoing research offers some hope for sleep sufferers like Sylvia Lee. Okay. Good night, Mrs. Palmer. Sleep well. Okay. It is, it is so important to understand the mechanisms that underlie the regulation of sleep and circadian rhythms because sleep problems are prevalent in our society. They appear to be growing year by year. And more and more research is showing that it affects our longevity, quality of life, and health. So what will the future hold? Only time will tell. I've heard that before. We will need considerable patience, obviously. Maybe a genetic predisposition for patients, genetically inserted into those ticking cellular clocks. The Secrets of the Sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the series advisory board, consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.